What's up guys? Today we're going to check out the Powersound Audio S2112M subwoofer. The PSA S2112M features a 21 inch driver in a relatively compact enclosure measuring 24 and a half inches wide by 23.75 inches in height by 23.75 inches deep and it weighs 135 pounds. It's wrapped in a matte black vinyl, so it'll keep reflections down to a minimum in your home theater. And the frequency response is 11 hertz to 200 hertz. So here you can see we have the amp plate, which is rated at 1920 watts RMS or 4300 watts peak. As far as switches and dials, we've got your off slash 12 volt trigger. You can take the toggle, put it in the center, which is the auto on off. Or if you want to keep it on all the way, move it all the way to the right. And you get some indicators for sleep and power. This is your gain slash volume control, volume knob. You got your room size, which is between small and large. You got your crossover between 40 and 125 hertz, which is variable. And then we also got a delay dial from zero milliseconds up to 16 milliseconds all the way to the end. So that's pretty cool that that's included back here as well. You get your unbalanced RCA inputs. You got your 12 volt trigger. You got your loop out. So if you want to daisy chain this with another sub, and then you also have your balanced XLR input. For placement, I've tried both behind my main seat and in the front left corner of my room, which for this particular sub, I found worked the best. It'll be hooked up to a Trenolv Altitude processor. And for demos, I'll be using a Kaleidoscape and a Zipidi Signature media player. I won't be using any room correction for this demo. I'm only going to be using what comes built into the subwoofer itself to integrate it within my system. As for the settings in the subwoofer, I found setting the room size dial between small and medium work the best for my space and for the subwoofer's own safety. First demo we're going to check out is Underwater. It's got a DTS HD soundtrack with a great combination of deep extension and quick hard hitting slam. We're also going to check out Fury with its amazing Atmos soundtrack. First thing that comes to mind is that this thing can play extremely loud and slams ridiculously hard. Now as comparison, I'm coming off of a few different subwoofers. The Rhythmic F18, REL 1510, and the Perlison D215S. The Rhythmic and REL are both closer in price to the PSA, while the Perlison is almost four times the cost. And yes, I know it's not exactly a fair comparison, but I'm going to do it anyway. All tanks, start squirting that tree line. Let's light them up. Let's go. Let's clean it up. Well, what do I shoot at? The Nazis don't The PSA can bang harder and louder than both the Rhythmic and Rel, and it can hang pretty well with the Perlison. During the Fury demo, I felt the PSA was a step slower than the other three subwoofers. It's not sloppy by any means, but those explosive tank shots had less of a snap than the other guys with a little bit of overhang. If I'd never heard this scene before with those other subs, then yes, I'd be totally impressed. But I did feel that it wasn't as tightly controlled. Where the PSA impressed me is that final explosion in underwater with that deep infrasonic wave. The REL isn't doing anything for this part while the Rhythmic is close to the PSA but is missing that extra 5% or so at the end. Comparing it to the Perlison, they both dig extremely low but the Perlison has a thicker, heavier weight to its response while the PSA was lighter with how it pressurized my room. I also felt that the Perlison was cleaner at about 20 hertz and below while the PSA sounded like it was wavering a bit. It was kind of lumpy in comparison, so it wasn't as precise as the Perlison. Next, we're going to pop on Edge of Tomorrow on the Kaleidoscape. It's got a DTS HD track that dips into the infrasonic realm. I'm not sure if we're even on the air. Uh, this, is... this was doing its thing till it hit that last two seconds or so. Then you could start to hear the driver start to give out. <laughs> 
Now I've heard this demo on an 80 inch Ascendo subwoofer and on the Perlisten, so I know exactly how it should sound. And the PSA sounded like it was about to blow up at the back end of this demo. Now keep in mind, if you're going to play content of this type that goes this low, you're going to have to set the room dial accordingly, because if you don't, the driver is going to do all kind of nastiness. I wouldn't recommend you setting this on large even if you have a large space because it will give out if you like to listen to your movies loudly. For this demo, I had set the dial to small so I wouldn't get all that mechanical noise, but by doing so, I was cutting out that initial deep impact, and it sounded just like the Rel. On the other hand, the Perlisten handled the same demo like a champ and remained clean all the way down and never once felt like it was going to explode. The PSA wasn't able to do this demo justice. Now I did take a few measurements in my room at my main listening seat. These are the responses I got in my room so it'll likely be very different for yours. The first one is with the room dial setting set to small, which was the safest setting with the least driver noise when driven hard. The medium setting gets me deeper extension with a slower roll off at 7Hz, and the large setting gets me even more output starting at around 10Hz down, but this did make the driver bottom out with demanding material. If you're listening at a low level and you know there's nothing crazy going on with the bass, then large can be really fun and really impressive sounding. But even setting it to small, I could still overdrive the sub at my normal listening levels. To be fair, most of the stuff I've watched wouldn't be detrimental to the subwoofer, but I'd like to know that the limiter would stop the driver from being overdriven. And it doesn't seem like it does, at least not on the one that I own. Just a quick thanks to all my Patreon and YouTube member subscribers. With your extra support, I was able to pick up the subwoofer to bring the community this review. So thanks guys. If you'd like to join the YouTube membership or Patreon, it really does help out the channel. At the time of this video, the PowerSound Audio S2112M is selling for $2,200. This is a big ass subwoofer for what I feel is a relatively smallish size. I've actually had some 15s that were way bigger. Well, these subwoofers are a fan favorite and I can surely see why. The performance to price ratio is definitely one of the best out there. Although from all the recommendations and comments I've gotten over the years about how it'll destroy subwoofers costing several times more, I didn't exactly find that to be the case. As with any subwoofer, it's got its strengths and weaknesses. This particular model should have no problems filling a big space with extremely tactile bass. But like I said earlier, I found there were some shortcomings when I compared it to cheaper and more expensive subs out there. It's not what I would call a quick or musical sub, so I wouldn't use it for a two channel setup. I felt it was more home theater centric. It digs plenty deep for a majority of the stuff that I've watched the last few months, but there are the occasional movies that would pop up that had bass that could make this subwoofer give out. So it's important that you set that room size dial correctly and not set it to large thinking you're going to max out the performance. Although setting it to large can sound really impressive, but just be careful. Overall for its asking price, if you take the time to set it up, it's a killer subwoofer that plays loud, goes low, and isn't all that big. You'll get exactly what you pay for. Well, what are your thoughts on the PowerSound audio subwoofers? Have you heard one and how do you like its performance? Leave your comments down below and let me know. As always guys, thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video if you found it useful and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you again in the next video.